the warfare for your mind. How do you keep every thought under control, under the obedience of Jesus Christ? You need to know and you need to understand because, beloved, if you don't, you can be decimated by the enemy. It is warfare, and you need to keep on that helmet of salvation. You need to have that shield of faith. You need to stand in the peace of God. We'll talk about it today. have an enemy, beloved, and that enemy is Satan himself and all of his demonic host. He has multitudes of demons, multitudes of evil spirits, and he is the prince of this world. He is the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. And yet God has left you in the midst of the world, and yet Jesus prayed, Father, I don't ask you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to keep them from the evil one. How on earth, and I'm literally talking about how on earth can you and I, while we are living here, be kept from the power of the evil one. How can you and I stand firm in the midst of this conflict when in a sense we are surrounded in, in among mankind by sons of disobedience, by children of wrath who belong to the kingdom of darkness and above us are the evil spirits and the rulers and the authorities and the principalities and the powers. How does God expect you and me to stand firm and why does he allow us to go through this? Well, he allows us, first of all, to go through this because he wants to make us a demonstration to all those around us of the sufficiency of Christ's grace, of the power of his grace and how it's perfected in weakness. And he accounts us as sheep for the slaughter, Romans 8 says. We are put to death all day long. And yet in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And this is why Paul at the end of his epistle to the church at Ephesus writes finally brethren and he's telling us in this final passage about the warfare that we are going to encounter but how we can stand firm how we can hold our position the position that he's taught us about in chapters 1, 2 and 3 and how we can live according to that uh, walk that we're to have where we walk in a manner worthy of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So he's come to this final portion using a Roman soldier as an illustration, as a visual demonstration of the things that we need. He tells us that we are to having put on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having put on, having shot our feet with the gospel, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, we are able to stand firm. But we've got to put on the whole armor. We have to take up the shield of faith. We have to put on the helmet of salvation. And we have to take that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and then with all all of that, we are ready to stand and having done everything to stand firm in the Lord. So what does he want us to know? He wants us to know truth. He wants us to understand righteousness. If I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand by knowing truth and by walking in truth and living according to the truth. I'm going to live and stand against the enemy in righteousness by keeping my life righteous because it's sin that gives the devil an advantage over us because sin is not to be in the child of God's life. And that's why we are to forsake sin and that's why we're to take our members and yield them as instruments of righteousness, as Romans 6 says, and not as instruments of sin. We are to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of 
piece. One of the things that I love to do beside reading and studying the Bible is I love history. And I love John Huss. He came around the time of the 1400s after Wycliffe was dying. And he was a, an incendiary preacher because he saw the impurity of doctrine in the church. And boy, did he enter into warfare. He was a man that was burned at the stake. And when he was burned at the stake, what he said reminded me of having on the sandals or the boots or the shoes of the gospel of peace. Listen to what he said as he was tied to the stake and as the wood was piled about him and as hundreds stood there to watch him die, children and adults. He said this, he said, God is my witness that the principal intention of my preaching and all the other writings was so that I might turn men from sin. He asked for forgiveness for those that were putting him to death and he died singing at the stake. How could he stand? How could he be victorious? You say, but he lost the battle. No, he didn't because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's why, beloved, you have to have on, if you're going to stand, if you're going to be the victor, you have to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace so that you can stand and you can stand because you know that you're at peace with God and you know that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which was in Christ Jesus. I think about one that came even before John Huss and, and many others that was an inspiration to them, and that was uh, Paul. And I want to take you to Paul's final letter, which is Second Timothy. And as we look at it, when he stands there or as he sits and as he writes to Timothy, this is what he says, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is his message to his son. He's saying, God has not given you the spirit of fear, Timothy, but he's given you power and he's given you love and he's given you a sound mind. Second Timothy 1, 7. And then he says, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. In other words, the power of God is there. You can be strong in the Lord. You can be in the strength of his might. You can stand in the strength of his might. You can stand with truth. You can stand in righteousness. You can stand in peace with this gospel of peace. So he goes on to say, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. Now stop and think, if you are standing, if you are standing there and you've got your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, it means that you have believed the good news the good news that sinners can have peace with God because of what Christ has done. The good news about the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. The third day he was raised again from the dead according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. And because he died for our sins and we were united with him in death, then when he is raised to walk in newness of life, we are raised also. So John Huss, standing at that stake, knew this. He knew that the minute that he was absent from the body, he would be present with the Lord. Why? Because he stood in the peace of God. Remember, Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome 
the world. So he wants them to remember, you have truth, you have righteousness, you have peace, but also you have put on the shield of faith. Now the shield had to go on before the helmet. And the shield went on because there was a way that it was attached around the arm in order for that uh, arm to help support that shield. That shield was massive. That shield was made with heavy, thick leather. leather. And many times what they would do is they would soak that shield in water. And they would soak that shield in water so that when the flaming darts of the enemy came at them, those flaming missiles, and they could lift up their shield of faith and by it they were able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. What did this man endure, John Huss, as he stood at the stake. He was accused of being a heretic. He was accused of being a blasphemer of God. He was accused of, of, of distorting the scriptures. But he knew in his heart the truth. He knew that he was righteous in what he was doing. He knew he was at peace with God. And so when the flaming missiles of the evil one came over, and these were, were like torches, they would take these, these uh, uh, missiles and, and they would dip them in tow and then they would ignite them and then they would send them over. And you can see this like in the movie Gladiator that was shown a number of years ago. And, and they would take these flaming missiles. Well, then they would simply put up their shield of faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is saying, I believe God. I believe God. I've got truth. I know what God says. And I believe God. So when a flaming missile comes at you, then what you need to do is you so know the word of God, you so know what God says, that you hold up that shield, and when that lie comes, when that deception comes, when that accusa uh, accusation comes, you just hold up the shield of faith because you know the truth and you know what God says and you are going to believe God. You're going to believe him no matter what he says. Do you see it all, beloved? It is such a beautiful, beautiful picture. And we have more to look at, more to discover in just a moment.